For today's makeup lesson, I wanna show you how to create your own makeup routine that is super quick and easy. I have lots of tips and tricks along the way of things that you might wanna add or things you wanna take away, but before we get into the actual tutorial, something that I have to do for the algorithm is say this. If you're new here to the Makeup Chair channel and you enjoy videos like this, then I might suggest hitting the subscribe button below. It's totally free. And if you're already subscribed, then thank you so much and welcome back. Now let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, before we do anything, I wanna share with you a couple of top tips on how to make your routine work best for you and to really make sure that the time, no matter how much time you have, really is what's the word I'm looking for? Utilized in the correct way. So my very first tip is to pick a feature. Any feature that you want on your face that you feel like, hey, if that's done, I feel good. As long as I have this done, I'm ready to go. For me, it used to be my brows. As long as my brows were on, then I would feel like I was put together. But now it's changed to my lashes only because I tint my eyebrows. So my eyebrows are kind of taking the backseat. So that's a feature that I would pick, but let me know what feature that you would pick. And then what you want to do is you want to allocate time to doing a quick look, and then you want to focus on your main feature. This is just going to make sure that you are utilizing your time in the best possible way. But I do have to say this, it's a little caution. If you are picking a particular feature, Feature. you also want to make sure you're balancing with the rest of your face so for instance if you pick your skin you have some skin issues so you, you you want to have full coverage you want to have full coverage you have to make sure that you are balancing with the rest of your face do a little bit with your eyes and your brows and contour and your lip because otherwise if you go full coverage and apply nothing else but full coverage makeup you might end up looking like you have a mask on your face so go a little bit more medium coverage even for instance if your brows are your thing you're like I, I only feel put together when I have my brows on you don't need to go as strong, particularly if you're not going to apply any face makeup because your brows will just really stand out. So you can tone them back a little bit. The great thing about that is that we don't have to allocate as much time freeing up some extra time so that we can do the rest of our makeup. Okay, with all that said, now I'm going to take my makeup off and I'm going to show you how to apply this look. Super easy, quick and simple and I have lots of tips along the way. So I gotta go take my makeup off. So we are back and I am makeup free and I've just applied my moisturizer and I always like to leave my moisturizer sink into the skin for about five minutes. Now in those five minutes, because this is a quick makeup look, we want to lay out everything in front of us. So I'm gonna put a list here and in the description box of the products that we're using, not the brands that we're using, but the products that I'm gonna be using today. I don't want to sell you on particular brands. I wanna talk about the actual products that I picked because I picked these type of products for a reason. But if you do want me to talk about products that I absolutely love, definitely let me know. I might bring back my Friday favorites. All of these were picked for very particular reasons when it comes to a quick makeup look. And I keep doing this because this is a very slow version of it. I'm gonna talk you guys through the quick makeup look in a very slow, relaxed kind of a way. Hopefully you'll be able to customize this to work for you. So bare skin, I have my moisturizer sitting on. I'm not using SPF today because it's pouring with rain outside. I'm not going out. So just moisturizer is enough. The moisturizer will just help to make sure that our makeup has something to sit on top of and it will grip hold of the makeup so much more for you. You don't necessarily need to use a primer every single time you do your makeup, but you do need to moisturize your skin, not just for the sake of your skin, but also for the sake of the makeup that you're going to be applying. So for me, I'm just going to apply a little bit of base makeup and I'm also gonna do my brows, then my eyes, and then we'll just see what time it is. And I do have lots of tips and tricks on what you can actually add to your routine that take no time at all. I'm gonna say one thing, to you. Skip the baking microwave. I'll show you in a second. But let's work on my base so I can get that out of the way. I'm going to start off with a little bit of concealer. I want to cover up any of the discoloration that I have around here. My skin is being very active lately. The closer I get to, you know, that time of the month, the more my skin really shows discoloration. And particularly the older and older you get, this is for my mature friends out there, you want to watch for around the eyes and around the nose. If you make sure that these areas have good coverage that works for your overall skin tone, those areas will seriously make you look so glowy and so healthy and so vibrant, it'll make a massive difference. So you really wanna focus on those areas for my mature friends out there. Even for me, I'm getting there. I'm getting older, <laughs> as we all are, and we're all lucky to get older. Those are the areas that I wanna focus on today. I also have this blemish that showed up yesterday because it knew I was filming today, and it was like, not without me. I'm not gonna go over the top because I don't want a full coverage look. This is a quick and easy, simple, type of a look. This is just to look more put together. Again, I will link what I've used below because I don't want to necessarily talk about 
brands. However, I am a brand ambassador for Plant Canvas Cosmetics, so I do want to show you this. This is the D08, and it has that dome shape, and it also has a concealer brush on the other side, which is a dome shape as well. I know I wasn't going to talk about products, but I will talk about my friend's brand because I love them so much. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to apply everything with this brush today. I'm going to take my concealer and I'm just going to focus this where I need coverage. This blemish, by the way, is not an active blemish. It's dried out completely. It's just still red. What you don't want to do is to go and use your brushes on active blemishes because it will just transfer any of the activity onto your brush and then it can spread everywhere else. So this one is not active, so it's not going to spread anything. And I really did the eyes last with whatever's left over because I don't want too much around the eyes. I actually don't mind my dark circles. I don't have very dark circles, but I actually don't mind them. As you can see, I haven't blended this out yet, but I'm gonna use whatever's left over on the brush to just go around my lids, just to apply a sheer wash of brightness. And then I'm going to blend out the edges of the concealer so that it blurs and blends into the skin. I want coverage here and then I want it to go doo -doo 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 -doo, and like smooth out and disappear into the rest of the skin. I'm still adjusting to my new lights and they're creating the weirdest shadows on my face. Doesn't that look like I don't really have any concealer on? At least for me in real life. Probably on camera it's showing because it's on like extreme high definition. I'm going to apply a light layer of powder foundation in a second. But before I do that, before I touch my face with any powder, I'm going to fix up my brows. So this is a brow tint. This is great when you are in a hurry because it's gonna do two things. It's going to shape your brows because it's a brow gel, but it also has fibers in it and some tint in it. So it's going to fill them in as well. What I like to do is I actually keep this. I have one in my makeup bag and I also have one in my car because sometimes I'm sitting in my car and I look in the mirror, like the flip down mirror and I'm like, I need to look like something today. Be completely barefaced and I'm like, I need a little bit of something. So I just grab this from my little side door and I'll just pop this through my brows and then I feel like there's a little bit of something. I got my brows on. And the reason I do this before I touch my face with any powder, it can catch the little baby hairs. Kind of overdid it on purpose so you can see, see how it's catching and kind of creating this like blown out look. We want to clean that up. So what you can do to clean up, just take a little bit of moisturizer, roll it onto your finger, and then just go like this around the edges and the moisturizer will take it off. And then you can even wrap your finger in a little bit of tissue and do that again. And it should take it all away. Or if you can, and you are surrounded by your makeup, then you can just take a little bit of a Q-tip and go around with some makeup remover. So I'm just going to rub this around the edges. So my brows are on, I have a little bit of coverage, and now I'm gonna go in with a powder foundation. So I'm going to be using two shades of powder foundation. I'm gonna be using a light one and a dark one. A lighter shade pretty much matches my actual skin, which is ghostly pale. And then my darker shade is about two shades darker, which pretty much matches my tan, if not about a shade darker than my tan. And then I just mix up the two of them. This means that I can customize them to say match my fake tan that I have which I haven't applied onto my face. Then I can also use one for brightening the center of my face, use the other one for darkening, kind of slightly contouring the rest of my face. So that's why I always use two different shades, a light and a dark. Now the reason I use powder foundations is because they're so quick and easy. I don't have to then go ahead and set them with anything except for maybe a setting spray, but I don't have to apply liquid, blend it really well. Then I have to go in with powder. Then I might even use a setting spray after the powder. It's just so much easier if I just go straight in with a powder foundation. So I have my two foundations in front of me and I'm going to mix and match these and I'm going to be using this brush to apply this. Now depending on the tool that you use to apply your powder foundation will depend on the coverage that you're going to get from it. If you like full coverage you're going to want to use a dry sponge or a velvet powder puff. This will give you maximum coverage. If you want kind of a medium to full coverage, go for a slightly smaller brush, something that's going to give you a lot of control, that's going to pick up the product really well. And if you want a sheer, just quick kind of a look, use a larger powder brush. This is a great in-between because it's a little bit of both. It's going to give me decent coverage, but it does have a lot of movement in it. So it's also going to blend it and shear it out if I want to. So I'm going to go in with a mixture of both of my shades. And I'm just gonna test it on my jaw before I start applying it everywhere, just so I can make sure that it is matching my tan. And I'm doing little circular motions working along the jaw. And then what I can do is, as there's less product on the brush, I can bring this upwards 
and I can slowly start to blend over any active areas that I might have oils. So it's kind of the opposite to using a liquid foundation. Liquid foundations, you tend to start in the middle and blend out. With powder foundations, I like to almost blend from the outer edge and blend in, just so I can make sure that I'm not going to have one area that's going to hold too much foundation. So this just allows me to get it on the face, and I'm gonna start really blending this across here. And then because this has a very sheer, very light leftover product onto the cheeks, it means I can then go straight in with a little bit extra and build up the coverage rather than going straight in across my cheeks, which would be too much. I'm also gonna bring this over my eyelids just to give me a little bit of coverage. And that's just layer number one, so just all over kind of even. Now what I can do is, because it's super quick, is I'm gonna take the lighter shade and I'm just going to tap this underneath my eyes. This is going to brighten underneath my eyes. I'm gonna brighten the edge of my nose, a little bit on the chin and a little bit on the center. And then I'm gonna take the darker shade and only use the darker shade instead of mixing it and work around the hairline into the hollow and then onto the jaw. Then if you want a little bit extra coverage, you can take your concealer brush or a slightly smaller brush or even a sponge, a dry sponge, and just take a little bit of your product and tap it where you need extra coverage. Essentially what we've done now is we've applied an even layer all over and we've kind of contoured and highlighted our face and even just applied a little bit of a base over our eyes. So we're pretty much good to go. I then like to take my brush and very lightly just go over the face in a downward motion. This is just going to make sure we're removing any excess powder and kind of knocking it off the skin. But also if we have any dry patches, this is just going to make sure those dry patches are going to be sitting down. Also those little hairs on the face that we all have too. Now you might notice something. Maybe some of you have, maybe some of you haven't, but do you see how this brow is slightly darker than this one? That's because I took a Q-tip and I just went over the brows just to remove any excess powder that might have attached to our brows. Because we are in a hurry and we applied our gel, there's a, there's a chance that a little bit of that powder might drop onto our brows, hold onto the dampness of the gel, and then therefore be on top of the darkness of our brows. So just take a Q-tip. You can even just apply a very small amount of makeup remover. Don't make sure it's not dripping. Don't drip it. You can even just put it onto a tissue and then just dampen this on the tissue and then just run over the brows to remove any excess powder. But if you start to see that there's color transfer onto here, you're pressing too hard because that means that you're removing the gel. We just want to remove the top layer of powder that might have set over the top. Of our brows. Now if you find that your face looks a little powdery after you've applied powder foundation, go in with a setting spray. This will literally bring it back to life. I always recommend using the long-lasting sprays, so don't necessarily look for hydrating or mattifying. Go for the long-lasting sprays. They tend to have a better feel and look over the top of powder foundations, at least in my experience. And you also want to make sure you are staying quite far back, so even if you usually set your makeup here like this, when you have powder foundation on, you need to go a bit further back because otherwise the molecules will grab hold of the skin and create little kind of droplets and then it will take a little bit of that powder and create these little speckles. We don't want speckles. Freckles maybe, but not speckles. I like to just go a little further back as far as I can go and then just go tap like this. Spray in the opposite direction, make sure it's not clogged and then you're ready to go. I know you're gonna be like, but that wastes a spray. Trust me, what you don't want to do is spray this on your face if it's clogged because it'll literally go and then you'll just have water dripping down your perfectly done face. We don't want that. So spray in the opposite direction, make sure it's not clogged, and then you're ready to go. Where's my fan? Then get yourself a fan. You will use it more often than you think, particularly for my older friends out there. If you're going through the menopause, get yourself a fan. So I'm pretty happy with my makeup. I've got my brows on. I have a little bit of like a difference with my highlight and contour and an even base, you know. I could apply blush now if I wanted to and just like get it out of the way, but I'll come back to it towards the end because I want to move on to the main focus, which for me is my eyes. So if you wanted to, you could finish off everything else, but then you might not have as much time for your main focus. Focus on your main feature, the main focus that you want your entire makeup look and the way that you feel to really show. So that's gonna be my lashes and my eyes for me. So we're gonna to switch to doing the eyes now. 
everything else can take a backseat. I'm gonna give my eyelash curler a quick clean and I want to show this in the video because I often don't say this, but honestly, this will make such a difference because of what we're going to be doing with this eyelash curler. So it needs to be clean and dry before we actually use it to make sure we don't have any product sitting on there at all. So when it comes to my lashes, I like to do a few extra steps. I'm going to be applying some falsies, but I'm also gonna be doing several layers and several curls. Also, when it comes to eyelash curlers, I don't know how everybody uses them. I, I couldn't go without them. And I know a lot of people are getting their eyelashes um, permed, which I really wanna do. I'm so nervous about it. I really wanna do it. But let me know if you do it. Is there anything that you're like, don't do it or do it or something. Anyway, let me know. I curl my eyelashes 800 times a day. My lashes are very straight. So this is so important to me to make sure that this little sponge that's in the eyelash curler, you have to make sure that you are, are changing these regularly. You don't necessarily need to go out and buy a, an entire new eyelash curler itself. What you can do is actually get these pads individually. Sometimes they come with one or two of them keep them and then you can just replace them because otherwise they won't curl. So you need to be changing these on a regular basis. And what I do is I place the eyelash curler in there and then I like push backwards and this just allows my lashes to go like this. <laughs> they literally go what? because they're being like pulled up from the root and then I can squeeze downwards. You just wanna make sure you don't grab the skin. I've done it before. Now the longer you hold this, the longer the curl will hold. I literally did an experiment where I held the curl and I like went up in like intervals and I did like a mathematical equation because I wanna show people how that actually makes a difference. So the longer you hold this for, the longer your lashes are gonna stay curled. While I'm doing this, I always like to use my time wisely. So while my eyelashes are curling, I'm kind of either just like recentering myself, checking my breathing, or I'm just thinking, what will I make for dinner today? You know, and I'll go through that in my head. And it just means that I'm using my time really wisely whenever I'm like in a hurry, you know? But sometimes when you're in a hurry, the best thing to do is just to let yourself breathe and sit in it and just realize that, it, that, that time is just gonna go how it wants to go and just take a few deep breaths. Okay, so that's my first curl. I'm now gonna go in with my mascara. I'm going to apply a very thin layer. Now again, this is my main feature. This is the thing that I wanna spend the most time on. So I am going to take those extra steps that I really like to do. I'm going to apply a very thin layer, and I mean the sheerest layer of mascara, literally like one, two, three, four, done. It's very important that you don't over apply with this first step. So I'm just gonna go wiggle, pull through. Wiggle, pull through, and I'll just get the edge, Ooh, like that. Do the other side. One thing I do when I do the other side is I try to remember to flip my hand, sometimes I forget. Because the thing is, a lot of these mascaras, not necessarily this wand, because this one isn't as tapered as a lot of them, but sometimes they're so thin and then they go so thick. So if you're doing this, right, and you have the thinner side to the inner corner, that's fine. But then if you go over here, you've got the thinner side to the outer corner and it changes the shape of the lashes. I, you might not believe it, but it's true. Okay, we're gonna leave that to dry. It needs to dry fully before we do the next step. So I'm just gonna leave that, that first thin layer to dry and this is what I call the hairspray method. So this is going to create a lot more hold for the second curl that we're gonna do and it's going to make sure that that hold stays in place. But it needs to be a very thin layer. So while that mascara is setting in that first layer, I'm going to take a brown pencil. You can use black, you can use brown, whatever works for you. I like to use brown because it adds a little bit of warmth to my eyes and it brings out the kind of chocolate tones within my brown eyes. So I'm gonna be using this shade chocolate onto the upper tight line. So you have the water line, which is the lower part here. And then you have the tight line, which is the upper part, or sometimes they're both used as, you know, they. People use the terms and they interchange them, but usually tight line is the top, water line is the bottom. I'm going to apply this basically in between the lashes and onto the upper tight line. And what you can do is you can just like, use your finger go like this and just kind of lift it so you can get right in there. Or some people like to literally close their eyes and run it across. There's a million different ways that you can apply this, but I just feel like this adds so much to my eyes if I had to pick, like only to do a couple of steps, I would do my brows, I would curl my lashes, maybe not even apply mascara, but just like curl my lashes, and then just use this. 
And maybe like, like a nudie lip balm. Because it literally makes you look like you have something going on. I know some people naturally have this darkness there and I'm so jealous of those people. Now, if this tickles, one thing I'd recommend is looking in the opposite direction. So if you're doing the outer corner, bring your mirror over here and then at least your pupil is gonna be really far away from where you're applying the pencil. So the further your pupil is away, the less it tickles. However, over time, you literally lose the senses in your eyes as a makeup artist or even as a model. You just, you, <laughs> you don't, you don't feel things anymore. It's like the first time I had my brows done, like tweezed my brows, I felt it so much, like it was so painful, but now I'm like, I don't even notice it. Just become immune to these things. It needs a little bit longer. I can still feel a little bit of dampness. So we're just gonna leave it a little bit longer because it's always better to err on the side of caution because of the next step that we're gonna be doing. Now for my older friends out there, I would recommend using a nude pencil on the lower part, even if you just do this, like watch this, right? Boom. Don't do it like multiple times, just go boom, done. And it will just brighten your eyes enough. I hate making a point of being like, you're gonna look so much younger because that's like younger is better. No, basically you're beautiful at whatever age you are. Just, you know, a few things can help you along the way to throw the, those little extra things out of the window and just be like, meh, and still let yourself be yourself. Moving on, I'm going to check my lashes. They shouldn't feel crunchy. If they do, you've applied a little bit too much mascara, but these feel nice and dry and they're ready for the next curl. It's really important that you don't go in with an extra curl on crunchy or over applied mascara because literally they will damage the lashes. And this thin there is going to give us that lift. It's going to give us that hold like hairspray. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing that we did before. We're going to place it in there just gonna give it a gentle squeeze this time. Look at that, look at that lift. Oh my goodness. One of my favorite makeup artists, Robert Jones, absolutely love him so much. He gradually adds mascara as he goes along. He also has a heated eyelash curler that he uses, but one of the things I love is the fact that he doesn't just apply all the makeup and then wait to the end to apply mascara. He likes to build it up over time, and that way you can see the shape that he's creating as well. Now that our lashes are curled, we're gonna go back in with a second layer of mascara, and this is going to be our sealant. This is gonna seal in that shape, and it should hold for us so much more than if we curled our lashes and then just applied a few layers of mascara. And this is especially great if you wear glasses like me. You don't want your lashes to be dragging onto your lenses. So you want to make sure your lashes are up and away. Advice though, when you're traveling with an eyelash curler. So my dad took my mom's makeup bag in his carry-on. Her bag was like full of stuff. So he took her makeup bag. She took out her liquids, but she left her eyelash curler in her makeup bag because she didn't have to show it. They took my dad's bag apart. They thought he had a, I can't say it on YouTube, a schweppen, should we say? And then they took out the eyelash curler out of the bag and they were like, what is this? And then they all had a big laugh. Make sure you have the eyelash curler at the top of the bag and not the bottom of the bag, because otherwise they'll take everything out. So while our second layer of mascara is drying, I'm going to apply a little bit of blush and a little bit of lipstick, and then I can come back to the eyes again. I'm gonna use the same brush that we applied everything with, because why not? I'm gonna grab a powder blush and just tap this on my cheeks. All about using your time wisely. So while we're waiting for our second layer of mascara to dry, why not? And then it still isn't dry, so it's almost getting there though. Just going to apply a little bit of lipstick. I will always opt for applying my lipstick first, and then I will do my lip liner after if I don't have a lot of time. Yep, my lashes are dry, so I'm going to skip my lip liner for a second and move back onto the eyes. I'm gonna go in for my second third curl. So I do just need to make sure that I don't have any mascara on the curler because otherwise our lashes will stick to the curler. So we don't want that. This one doesn't need to be, again, squeezed as much. A very light squeeze is all you need. And you probably don't even need to hold it for as long as the second one either. I'm then going to go in with some falsies. Completely optional, obviously. I just love wearing falsies. Anytime I have a chance to, I will. So I just applied some lashes just off camera. Also, I had to go and get myself a hot water bottle because it is so cold. Actually, Davey got me this one. Our heater is broken and we haven't got an electrician in yet. I will do a video talking all about lashes really soon. They're pretty much the same length as my lashes. They just add just a little bit more volume. They're very sheer, very lightweight and I really like them. So our lashes are done. I'm pretty happy with everything. I've looked at my watch and I have a little bit of extra time. 
So I'm like, okay, what can I do next? I wanna show you. I have a few extra steps that you can add if you have extra time, or you can just forget about it if you don't. We don't need makeup, makeup is supposed to be fun. But if you do have extra time for a little bit of extra fun, then here are some fun steps. I wanna talk about microwaving. So have you heard of baking? So baking, for anybody who doesn't know, is basically applying a kind of a heavy layer of powder, usually along here and underneath the eyes, as a way to clean up the rest of your makeup. And it's basically called baking because you leave it to bake. You just leave it on there. And during that time, it just creates that really clean line and then you just brush everything off. And then you get this like, beautiful, bright, clear effect. I wanna show you how you can do it in a really quick and easy way. Microwaving instead of baking. Baking a cake takes like 30 minutes in the oven. Microwaving, you could do a cake in like three minutes. They pretty much both taste like cake. One's probably better than the other, but if you don't have much time, of course you can microwave. So that's what I wanna show you how to do today. But first of all, we need an excuse to microwave. So we wanna create a clean line after we have contoured. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of my favorite sculpting product. I'm gonna grab the brush that I've been using this entire time, and I'm going to lightly contour. So we have our contour on, and I'm gonna show you guys how to microwave. First of all, I'm gonna grab a sponge, and look at these. I'm going to microwave with some eggs. Look how cute these are. This was an accident. I actually just wanted to use these because I was feeling very spring inspired. I'm really excited for spring, but I just thought I'd take these out because they have that spring vibe. And let's use the yellow one. And um, we're going to keep this dry. Don't use the damp one, we want to keep this dry. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a light press powder, so a lot lighter than I would go if I was using a powder to bake. When you want to microwave, you want the ingredients to just be a little bit more extreme. So I'm gonna go in with the white and then this guy right here. Let me kind of dirty it up a little bit. Let me just bring this down a bit further. Okay, see there's no strong definition. We want to create strong definition. You're gonna wanna feel for the hollow of your cheekbones and then you are going to go underneath that, just like that. I'm also gonna do just the edge of my nose and also the edge of my eye. I'm gonna squash down the sponge a little bit to create this like lifted effect, just like that. And you can also do the edge of the nose, maybe even the center. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your brush and you're just going to blend that out. And that is essentially microwaving. It basically gives the effect of baking in a much shorter time. I'm then gonna go in with a little bit of setting spray and I'm going to apply a little bit of highlighter before the setting spray has time to set. This is also going to bring our skin a little bit more life because of the powder that we've also applied on top of our powder foundation. Again, extend and then just hit it. I'm gonna take my brush with a little bit of highlighter and before my skin has time to dry, I'm just gonna tap it a little bit on the inner corner. And then I'm just going to let this set while I finish off with my hair and apply some jewelry. So I just took the clips out of my hair, added a little bit of hairspray, and added some jewelry, especially little stud earrings. Do not underestimate the effect, just little studs. Any studs that like work with your skin tone, pearls in particular, can just really bring out everything on your face. Like just bring out your eyes, bring out your smile, bring out any little shine that you have on your skin. I did have to go with gold ones today because this is one thing that I always do whenever I'm using particular brushes. If the handle is gold, I just have this weird thing that I have to wear gold jewelry that day because I applied it with a gold brush, so I'm gonna wear gold. Little thing that I like to do. I'm also gonna finish off my lips because I only have lipstick on, I don't have my lip liner. I always keep my lipstick and my lip liner in my handbag. That way, if I'm in the elevator, I can just like, you know, fix it up, or if I'm waiting for the bus, I can fix it up. I always just have them there. Sometimes I'm even trying to do my makeup upstairs in my makeup room, and I'm like, everything's downstairs. I have no lipstick up here, but. I got my lip liner and I'm just gonna go in with lip liner and I know most people put lip liner on before lipstick but I actually like doing it after because I can put the lipstick on, I can see the kind of shape and the coloring that I want and I can sharpen up the edges with my lip liner. Top tip if you want your lips to look bigger, first of all focus in the center, right? But then make your top lip slightly darker slightly darker than your lower lip. Don't try to make your upper lip look bigger unless you naturally have like the reverse so that your lower lip is smaller than your upper lip. That's fine, work with that. But if you have maybe a one-to-one -one ratio with your lips, just allow that one to be slightly darker on top and it will make the bottom one look bigger no matter what. It's just the way that the eye works. 
But yeah, that is pretty much my quick and easy makeup routine. I hope that you learned something from this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up because I really appreciate it. And comment something below about what your quick makeup routine is. Anything that you do before you go out, even if it's just like the only thing that I do before I head out of the door is blank. Let me know what that is because I would love to hear all about what your usual routine is. I'm always looking for easier ways of getting myself ready and feeling more put together. So if you have any tips on that, definitely let me know. And as always, my friends, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I'll see you in a video really soon. Oh, that was, I haven't said that in so long. Gosh, she makes me want to cry. <laughs> This is my first video back in a while because I was really sick and then I was really sick and then I had a sling and I couldn't do my makeup and I've, I've, I'm only just out of my sling now. This shoulder is really swollen so if you see it on camera and you think that there's something wrong with it, it's because I have been in a sling and it is very painful. I have another video coming up soon that I filmed while I was wearing my sling so I, I, I do have another one and I also have a video on Tear Nanook coming up as well but it's really nice to be back. I'm very emotional. <laughs> Um, yeah, be kind to yourself and I'll see you in the next one.